Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I am so excited to be joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Ron Adams. We got so much to dive into. Um, but before we do, feel free, Ron, just kind of a quick intro of you, name of the company, what you're currently doing, and then we'll get into your story and, and all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a boring topic, but uh, let's get into it. My name is Ron Adams. I'm the owner of Paint Tigers based out of Los Angeles, California. I've been in the trades for 27 plus years. I own the California Paint Company before this. I own the San Diego Paint Company before that. I've retired multiple times. Um, and this time around, uh, Paint Tigers is being developed to be a systems-based company instead of just a sales company. We're not trying to um, be a regular. We're, we're standing out from the rest of the commodities by being um, uniquely different. We're going to give their prices instantly. There you go. Pick a package, whichever one you like. Boom. Amazon at your front door. I love it. Yeah, you're doing right. so many things very uniquely. Um, so I'm super excited to dive into it. I want to, uh, I only know bits and pieces of it. Okay. So I kind of want to like, almost like take it back a little bit. Like you own several painting companies. You've retired a couple of times. Like, like how did you first all get into this? What made you retire a couple of times? How'd you end up where you are today? Like kind of the, the full story of it. Uh, my story is so boring, Eric. All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I got into I got into painting by accident. Um, I was a real estate investor, um, and I was flipping homes, um, and I had a problem getting the trades into my projects to uh, to do the jobs. So eventually, I just started picking up the hammer and and the saw and the paintbrush myself. Um, so I found that to be easier to flip my home. So I just put together my own crew, and. Uh, for my own homes, 89 transactions later, 89 flips later, I said, oh, forget this. I'm going to just turn this into a business. So nice. we started a construction company. And one of the first construction companies we had was called Ron Adams Construction. And, and that was back in whenever, back in the 90s. Um, yeah, so that's how I got into it. And retirement, multiple times. Um, it, it is what you do with your money. It's not, it's not what you do. In the, it's what you do with the money you get. Um, so the vanity matrix, everyone says up there on their, on their Facebook posts about how great of a painter they are. And Hey, I made a hundred million dollars in sales this month or $10,000 yeah. in sales this month. Those are all vanity matrix. The only fucking matrix that matters is how much fucking money is in your goddamn bank account. That's spendable that uncle Sam can't touch. That's the only matrix that matters. Amen. Um, yeah, I'm going to screenshot my fucking one of my accounts right now. You can't see my password. If I punch it in, can you? No, no, no. You're not sharing your screen or anything, so you're good. Were those um all all those those uh real estate transactions that then um made you start the construction company? Were those you you were saying flips or are those things you were keeping as rentals? Both. I was doing both. Um, and I got a picture here, and your face is in it. Let me text it over to you, and you can put it on your screen there. <laughs> yeah, when we edit this together, we'll uh we'll throw it up there or something. That's right. amazing. I love it. So that's just one account. And uh I, how much I just sent it to your cell phone. Yep, it's coming through right now. Yeah, no, exactly. Like I mean that's that's not a small chunk of change. And like that's exactly what it's about. Exactly what uh when it's all said and done, right? When you pay all your team members, when you pay all your expenses, when all this happens, how much do you actually keep? Um, exactly. You, that way yeah. you're not ending up the guy that's working your entire life away. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with working your entire life. I know some great people that work their entire life and I'm probably going to wind up being one of those people, <laughs> but I'm doing it by choice. I'm doing it, I, I love to work. I love the art of business. Yeah. Um, I love the art of painting and that with the art of business. Um, so the business aspect has more of my attention than the, than the art of painting, where the art of painting, I was very passionate about it. I knew everything from the diameter of the single bristle to, to where the water was being purified for the paint and what, mm -hmm. what mines the, the titanium dioxide was coming out of. And now I'm more in love and in passion with the art of business. Yes. No, I, I absolutely love that. I, uh, I very much feel the same way. I can't quite say I'm to your level where I've had all these other companies and, and done all these things, but I, uh, for whatever reason, I had that switch very early on. As soon as I could like, just like pay my expenses, the money stopped mattering. And like, I was just like, I just love playing the game. Like, I just want to be the best. Uh, so I, I get that. And it, it clearly seems like it's the, the same thing for you. Um, so we retired a couple of times, but we ended up starting other companies just because we love the game. We wanted to work. We were working by choice, like you were saying. Um, 
I'm curious to hear from you, like, what are some of the like big differences or maybe some like the key lessons you feel like you learned along the way from the different companies? I'm sure they've all been uniquely different, had their own unique challenges. Uh, yes, they all did. So in the beginning, I, I've made, with all my, I've made so many fucking stupid mistakes along the way. And, and back <laughs> then when I got into it, we didn't have instant freaking access to all the information to anyone that wanted to share it and anyone that wanted to share it wanted to put a price tag on it nowadays it's the same thing they want to put a price tag on their knowledge and whether they're doing it with youtube likes or take my freaking course and i'll make you the best or hey take this program or you got to do this come to our convention convention whatever those that are you be careful if you sign up for one of those be careful their their end goal is to make sure they empty your pockets into theirs so be careful whatever you choose there's some great guys out there and there's some good programs out there just be careful. But um, some of the stupid mistakes that I would uh, recommend, um, probably form over function, form over function. Um, so figure out what, what puts money in your pocket, what make, what, mm. what moves the needle every morning, where every morning when I wake up, you can tell my wife, ask my wife, Blondie, she'll see me walking around. Oh, I'm whispering to myself or saying to myself out loud, what's going to move the needle? What's going to move the needle? Whether it's me visiting freaking Sherman Williams, taking care of my store managers, taking care of the people inside the store, making sure I'm taking out the lunch, filling their fridge with Red Bulls and Monsters, or me going out and sending extra postcards or thank you letters to my clients, or um, me just bombarding another neighborhood, some some postcards or door knockers. I don't have door knockers right now, but I, my intent to get door knockers, so my intention yeah. is to do door knockers. Um, so what moves the needle? Um, some stuff does not move a needle, and it has no... I'm sweating in this goddamn car. <laughs> yeah, it's probably out there. So some stuff is just is just a waste of your time. To me, it's a waste of time. Um, the perfect example of a waste of time is is um, a lot of people are really pushing this SOP shit for me, and SOPs are ridiculous. Uh, the guy's going to work the way he works, and if you don't like it, you just fire him. Uh, another thing was uh, employee handbooks. I'm not wasting my freaking time. That doesn't move the needle writing an employee handbook. The guys know what to do. I personally hand train each one four to six months. Personally, they know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. So doing all this other stuff is like is like mowing the lawn with a pair of scissors. It does not freaking. Yeah, Focus you can't do it. And it is, yeah, it's not the stuff that matters. What matters is is the relationships you develop with your clients, the relationships you de develop with um, your laterals. Your laterals are are Sherman Williams, the drywall guys, um, all the other construction crews you meet across um, across the fields. Any of your laterals matter. All those relationships matter. Um, drywall guy tell, gives me a call. Hey, we're drywalling this house over here on the ridge. And thank you. I make sure I give him some love in a financial sense, and then. Yep. I'm going to go over there and make my, hey, here's my folder. Love you, Ron. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So pay attention to what moves the needles. Don't be mowing the lawn with a pair of scissors. If it doesn't move the needle, push it aside. Uh, yeah. There's only a couple of matrix that matters. Uh, the matrix that really matters is um, your customer matrix that you need more. And if you can get more money out of them or more value out of them. Yeah. Um, so those are the only two matrix that matter. Yep. My customers, how do we get do more, customers, more customers and how do we raise our average ticket? Exactly. Yep. That's the only two major tricks that matter. Everything else is, is cutting lawn with scissors. Everything else. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. I was, I was just talking with one of my coaches the other day and we were literally talking about exactly that. Like the only really, the only really two things, if you boil it down to everything, he was saying like at their quarterlies, like he reminds his whole team and everything comes down to exactly that. Like when his team is presenting new ideas and stuff that they want to implement the next quarter is, is it going to help us get more customers or is it going to help us charge more per customer? If it's not doing yeah. either of those two things, it probably shouldn't be an initiative for the quarter. Right. So yeah. I, super valuable. Yeah. Was that your coach? Yeah. One, one of the guys I work with. Yeah. Hired well, some one, smart coach. One, one of my coaches that like I pay that we work with. Yeah. All right, guys, send me his name. I want him as my coach too. Set up. <laughs> you can't yeah. get enough coaching experience. And whether you got to pay for it or not. Now, I was just telling everyone, be careful what you spend money on. Um, but feel free to spend money on skill sets. So if you're going to learn a sales mm. skill set, spend money on it. Spend more money. that you. If you can't afford it now, you're definitely not going to be able to afford it five years from now. Spend money on your skill sets. 
by all means. Sales and marketing is probably one of the best skill sets anyone. It, you know what? It is the best skill set. Sales and marketing. If you don't have those, you're you might have, yeah, you're out of business. What do, what do you feel like? Whether it was sales and marketing or other skill sets, like what skill sets do you think moved the needle the most for you? And like, how did you go about like really, really developing those? Um, sales and marketing. Sales. Um, what's your definition of sales and my definition of sales? Uh, let me go through it. Marketing. Um, getting your name out there, whether it's postcards, whether it's door knocking, and door knocking pays. Door knocking. Door knocking pays. Mm-hmm. Hey, here's my business card. Here's my card. That pays. Um, and sales is. What we're doing now, we're automating our sales process by offering our three packages, basic, premium, ultimate, sales. Um, and the majority of people will, um, so we just hard, oh, oh, we just hard open Paint Tigers uh, this last weekend. Uh, so we've been in the soft opening and from last weekend to this, to today, we already made four ultimate sales. Um, Amazing. Through our, through our automated process. They, there's your differences here. That's part of our sales. So really what I'm trying to do is work myself out of the job um, and just become the chairman of the company. The whole title, CEO, CFO, freaking vice president, president, none of this shit matters. That doesn't move the needle. It's just a vanity matrix. It's just a vanity name. Um, so me working my way out of the job, the best way I can do it through my sales process is by automating our sales. Here it is. Um, and that's where Pathfinder is coming in right now. And it looks like Vanessa's working on something for me. Yeah, I know we've been we've been plugging away some stuff in the background with some of the the new stuff you've been doing. Uh, make sure that's as effective as possible for you, um, which I love. I, I think it's very interesting. It's a very unique approach. It sounds like so far it's off to a hot start. And it's working pretty well. Um, yep. So I'm curious. So that QR code, that, yeah, that QR code that Vanessa's working on and putting it in our marketing. Uh, that's a mm-hmm. dynamic QR code. So at any time we can up the up the pricing in a few seconds, a few clicks of the keyboard and. The pricing is different from one client to the next. Right. Paint costs so go up, something changes, et cetera. We can make our schedule gets too booked up. If our schedule gets too booked up, all of a sudden our prices go up because now we're worth more. Amazing. No, I yeah. love that. That's super dynamic. Um, it sounds like it's been working really well. Like I told you uh, beforehand, I'm super excited to, to see how that goes, how the whole thing pans out. Um, I, I want to hear as well, um, like completely transparently, you, you've probably at this point seen a lot of marketing, right? You've done, uh, you've probably done the door knocking, you've done postcards, you've done all sorts of stuff. I've seen some of your other, you know, marketing collateral and everything. Um, what's your experience been like with marketing in general, with Pathfinder? What's helped you see success with some of it versus not success with some of the others? I'd, I'd love to hear you break it all down. I'm sure a lot of people it, would get a lot it of that. It all time goes on. So if your marketing platform does not change, we'll say like um, Craigslist. Craigslist 10 years ago was on fire. Um, anyone that wanted to make money 10 years ago was either on, but had that market on Craigslist. And, uh, plus they had their, their personal relationships in callbacks. Yep. Um, and nowadays Craigslist is dead. Uh, we still market on Craigslist, but we give it very little value. We're, our, our ROI, even though it's just $5, a, uh, $5, $5 an ad, it's ridiculous. We can't get nothing off Craigslist anymore. No yeah. one's on Craigslist no more. Mm-hmm. Facebook is one of the biggest marketing platforms out there. Uh, on the planet, and you probably know better matrix on that. Who's bigger in Facebook? Not a lot. Um, I mean, TikTok slowly getting there. Google's obviously huge too, but yeah, there's there's not a lot. All like right. So uh, everyone, as soon as they wake up in the morning, they're checking their Facebook account uh, just to see how many who loves them still. Um, yeah. Every morning, who loves me? Who loves me? Who loves me? Oh, I got a heart. Oh, I got a thumbs up for my freaking random whatever topic. It's, <laughs> it's so great population um it's so ingrained yeah it's not going nowhere uh whether i know facebook just changed to meta oh yeah let's get into meta first when you get time um so facebook by far right now is our biggest um best return on our investment um and as far as pathfinder pathfinder and me i've been running leads uh, i've been running facebook ads along with pathfinder and um, Facebook is, is pretty freaking amazing right now, Doug. Uh, yeah, we ran, well, my ads aren't as written as well as your ads, but uh, <laughs> you got professional copyright stuff. And uh, at the end of the month, I'll go through, I'll go through all my matrix and all my numbers, and I'll be honest up front with everybody. Um, but yeah, you have to be on Facebook and you have to be running Facebook ads and you have to pay for those ads. It's, mm. it's, it's but if you're not doing it and yes, I know it's about reputation. You're going to get your callbacks from 
oh, my neighbor recommended me or recommended you. And But it, the, after COVID hit, a lot of people aren't talking to their neighbors anymore. Or I got neighbors right now that haven't talked to their backyard neighbor ever in the past 10 years <laughs> they lived there. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. we're, so, all, we're all on our phones, right? We're all on, on our, our phones. Yep, it's and uh, let's get into meta, dude. Let's get into some meta. Yeah, oh. I mean, go ahead. All right. So, uh, what are you guys doing in the meta verse, in the meta universe? There, in the meta universe. So, okay, sure. I thought you were talking like meta in terms of owning like Facebook and Instagram. Um, because on that front, not a whole lot has changed. It was really just like the name of the holding company switched, and Meta still owns Facebook and Instagram. So, yes, technically, like we as mar like our marketing company is much less like facebook ads and it's more now like meta ads because we also run on instagram and, and they're very similar platforms um in terms of like actually advertising in the metaverse i think it's going to be a thing don't get me wrong i think it'll be a thing at some point i'm not sure when that time is and at least me personally i think it's still a good bit in the future i think it's a, it's a ways before it can be actually feasible especially i think for home service base is there is there a spot for it maybe now with like cryptocurrency exchanges and some of that other stuff maybe more related where a lot of those people are i think yes um but in terms of a lot of your local businesses i see that still years into the future um but i'd love to hear your take on it yeah uh, from the construction industry i'm not in depth as you are into it uh, I can just tell you from my boots. Uh, we know Amazon, Facebook, Ikea, Walmart, and uh, there's a couple of other big companies. They're coming into the construction world. We know Facebook has already developed the CRM for contractors. Um, mm -hmm. We know that, uh, that uh, all these companies are hooking up with, um, what is that? Salesforce. They're all hooking up with Salesforce. And Salesforce is going to be the backbone pushing all these companies into the construction world or helping them push into the construction world. Um, and we're estimating in probably about, probably about 17 months from now, um, we'll start seeing the first footprints of them coming in. And they're, I think they're going to do price penetration um, and shake out the majority of the, the big players or buy up the big players and shake everyone out. And then uh, they can do price skimming after that. So I, I've seen a lot of that. Um, I, I've seen some of the stuff of like Facebook entering and some of those other things. Um, and I know the immediate reaction from a lot of painters and a lot of contractors online is like, they're going to, they're going to take it all. They're going to undercut us. Like they're going to run us all out, all these sort of things. I feel like your perspective is very similar to mine. W what's your perspective when you hear a lot of that? What would you say to all those painters when that's their reaction? If you think you're just going to stay the same, if you're not growing, you're going to die. You better grow and you better, my perspective, my recommendation to my brothers, to my grandson, to my daughters in the construction industry, and to my friends in the construction industry, um, get more tech savvy. This is a technical world, a technology world. Um, and, and start shaking off the stuff you don't need and start paying for the services that you do need. If you need an accountant, get it. If you need a bookkeeper, get it. If you need um, a professional marketing company, get it. If you need a professional VA to take care of your back end office, get it. Um, if you don't, you're going to get shaken out of the market. There's no more just uh, staying the same size or staying in the same pattern. In 17 months from now, there's going to be a different world as for the contractors for construction industry. Yep. No, I 100% agree. That's one of my favorite little quotes. If you're not growing, you're dying, uh, which I 100% believe. You always have to be finding ways to level up and improve and get better. Um, and I think you're, we're, we're seeing that a lot in terms of all the trades. And I know especially like a lot of the painting community I'm involved in, it's like that's the push in a lot of ways. Like, professionalizing the industry, involving more tech, involving some of those things to create better customer experiences, you know, all those things that, you know, we're talking about that you're doing a lot with, of with paint tigers. And, um, I, I agree, right. As some of those things come in, like, yes, does it maybe create competition, but if you're doing all those things, if you're always innovating, right, like you'll, you'll be able to still stand apart and, and, and still run a very successful company, right. You'll have things that make you uniquely different that make you stand out in the market. Um, at least that's how I feel with all of it. Um, yes, I agree. You, you need to be, you need to be different. You need to stand out. Everyone is a commodity unless you stand out. And there's no difference in from this apple to that apple, from that egg to that egg, unless it stands out. Um, and, and I'm probably gonna get some hate for this, but every painter out there, I'm the best. I'm the best painter there is. And, and let's get real, you're probably not. And um, someone probably really is the best painter out there, but that's not the point. The point is, what is the client going to see? What's the customer going to see? Why is the customer going to click on your ad? Why would the customer hire you versus hiring somebody else? That's the only thing. 
Um, why pick you? Well, here's why they're going to pick paint tigers um, and why we shifted off the California paint company. Oh, there's a whole bunch of things. Let's get deep into this. <laughs> yeah, California paint, company, California paint Company was a personal hands touch kind of company. We made great money being a personal hands touch, white glove, red carpet, da da da. You get your awesome price for your awesome price that you're paying me. You're going to get all this. <sighs> and we're going to make bells it rain whistles, love all project over you. manager. Yeah. yeah, the whole yeah. the whole nine yards. Yep. And back then at California Paint Company, our closing ratio, we were targeting 30%. So we wanted a 30% closing ratio. We didn't want 80% because our price mark, our price ticket was so high. Mm -hmm. Now as Paint Tigers, we we reshifted our whole thinking. Um, now we're a systems-based company and we're prepping to go across state lines, not only California, not only Southern California, um, but across other state lines. Um, but to do this, we have to we don't have to, but I want to be a hundred percent close ratio. And what we're looking to do is hit all the buttons for any client that wants to paint. Hey, here's your basic price. Here's your premium. Here's your ultimate. One of these is going to fit you. You just tell me one and the Amazon driver is going to drive up and put a painter in a box right in front of your freaking door. <laughs> one of these packages make me a freaking dollar. Um, and of course my return on investment is better with the ultimate package, uh, but it's re good ROI regardless of what package they pick. Um, so being different for me is being able to offer all these packages and offer an amazing warranty. You pick our ultimate package, you got a 12 year warranty and we have it Which all written down. crazy. Right? That's, it's, that's it's, an amazing warranty. <laughs> unconditional, unconditional 12 year warranty. And then, uh, yeah, we can talk about that another time. Uh, let me see what else. So unconditional 12 year warranty, um, three packages to choose from and we're available whenever you're ready. So let's talk oh. about the sub Contractor and employee role models in both of those because I hear contractors going into both of those. Yeah, I was gonna say that's always a hot debate. A hot debate. You've ran three different companies with this. You've seen a lot of it. So yeah, what, what's your take on it? Um, both are good models. Uh, the employee model is is um, less stressful. I think, in my personal perspective, it's less stressful. My, my guys are personally trained. Each one knows exactly. I can leave the job site for two weeks and come back and know exactly what happened, exactly the process. Where the subcontractor model, um, it, it becomes stressful. Are you really going to warrant into that? Are you going to get sued by in, in a year or two when you're, we got pain failure because the sub you hired actually hired another sub and came in and they didn't provide crap um, or they used cheap product. Um, so if you're going to run the subcontractor model, make sure you have a team that can go over there on la the last day or two and, and just tighten everything up and make sure everything's good. Uh, but let your subs run. Make sure your subs are paid for generously. I've had subs bid my jobs and we let subs do our jobs from time to time, not often, but time to time. And and they would bid the job too low and we won't mm. let them do it too low. We make sure, no, that's not enough money for you to want to be here. I want my subs to want to be here. Not just be yep. here to collect a buck. I want them. I don't care if you make more profit on me. I'd rather just make a little something and make sure you want to be here and do a great job because you want to pick up my next job. Yes. Um, so whether it's a 50% mar profit margin or I'm only making 20% on the back end, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Um, some money's better than no money laws. Yeah. So if you're going to run the sub model, make sure you have a team ready to back it up. Um, that's would be my only concession there because I've ran both employee and straight sub companies before. Um, yeah. So that's my two cents on it. What's your experience with uh, other contractors? What ones work? Yeah, I, I love it. And, um, you know, I always say, and you've probably heard me say this on our coaching calls with other clients a lot, is that I think it depends on what you want to build. You know, I think it how you want to run your company, right? I, I really like how the subcontractor model offers you flexibility. And for a lot of guys, like that may struggle with hiring and some of those other things, it offers you flexibility. It allows you to possibly scale faster right? We don't quite have as much of that hiring and training process that often takes time. And those are skill sets you learn and develop, right? We can, we can bypass a lot of that by finding some good subcontractors, right? You don't quite have to have a whole, you know, schedule worth of work for those people. If they're not working, you're not paying them where it's not quite the same as W2. So I, I really like that about subs, but everything you said is also con to it. And I think, again, it depends on what you want to build, what you're doing right now with paint tigers, something very special, something very unique, nobody else has really done before, gets incredibly hard to do with subcontractors, right? You don't have nearly as much control over it. You can't customize that experience as much. You can't train them the way you want this thing to be done with this custom, unique, one-of-one -one type service. I think all that gets really difficult. Um, 
and I think that's where ha- having that W two route makes you stand apart. And if you're looking for all those things where it's like, Hey, I'm looking for every way possible to stand out from the competition. You can do it with subcontractors. There, there are ways to, but I think you have a lot more tools in your toolkit to stand out, create a different service, create a more unique service. If you're training all those people in house. Um, so I see both sides of it. I think it depends on who you are and, and what you want to build. Yeah, we're, we're debating right now. Like we're, if we go in cross state lines into Arizona, Texas, Florida, all the Southern border States, yeah. Um, you're probably not going to have a choice. We're going to have to sub it out and make sure our subs are, of course, we're going to make sure our subs are paid well. Um, and there, there's a lot of painting contractors. They rather sub only. They don't want to go out there and market. They don't want to go out there and do the sales and they don't want to put out any, they just want to show up to work nine to five mm-hmm. and that's all they really want to do. Um, and, and, and so we're, we're debating how we're going to cross state lines, whether we're going to do the sub model or, the employee model or a combination of both where we bring in a team to back up the subs. Yeah. And I, I love what you said too. I, that, that's really sharp. And I don't see a ton of guys doing that, having a subcontractor crew go do the work, but then having a team to come in after them and touch up everything, make sure it's all good make sure everything's because I'm, I'm assuming that that's when you were talking about that, you were talking about bringing a painter through, not just like a project manager, or a quality control person. Was I hearing you right on that? We're bringing, for the sub model, we'll let the subs do the job and then bring our team in to do last day cleanup, last day touch up, last day touch up. Yeah. Um, the clients remember you on the first day and clients remember the clients remember what you look like on the first day and they remember what you look like on the last day. They don't care what you look like in between. They don't even remember. You can go. They don't even. Yeah, they don't even remember. So long as you pay them a visit the last day, Eric, my name is Eric Fashionit. I'm the painter of Paint Tigers. Everything went out well. You want to do a final walkthrough? Okay, boom. Love and kisses. Yeah. And that's all. Absolutely. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. Um, I think that's amazing. So I'm, I'm excited to see how you, how you expand into some of those other areas and um, just how the whole piece goes with the, with the subcontractor side of it. I think too, one thing that I see a lot and I have to imagine you see this, but I'd love to hear your take on it. Just like what you said, I think there's a lot of painters out there that, that run their own company that really they don't want to. They're like, I hate sales. I hate marketing. <laughs> I hate trying to figure all this out where it's like, yo, you could make really good money just being a subcontractor. Like you don't have to do all that. You could just m- have a different model and still be really successful. Like, do you see that same opportunity for a lot of people? Out here, there is. Uh, there's a lot of guys um, that love painting. They're really passionate about it. They, they actually do the research and the study and they spend time to, to learn about the products and the proper processes and, and, uh, and they don't like the business side uh, for one reason or another. It, it just, they don't like communicating with the people. They don't, maybe they have bad English skills. Maybe they have bad reading literature skills um, or maybe they just like being the solo painter doing a project or them and a buddy doing a project. Uh, but they're very, they're very, very good at it. Um, so I see that here and those guys will work great in a subcontractor model if you can find those guys. That, that you just keep them booked. Hey, you know what? I got three jobs next month with your name on it. You want them? Perfect. Yep. Exactly. I, I know some of our guys, like it, like that's their sales pitch in a lot of ways. It's like, you don't have to do all the stuff you don't want to. Like you just do what you're good at, right? And they're selling them on that opportunity. Exactly. We can keep you booked. I got three jobs next month. Uh, I love it. So cool. Um, unless you got other topics you want to cover, I always like ending these with with this question, right? Um, and I think this will be so much fun for you because you've, you've done this now several times, right. And, and been doing this for a while. Um, if if, like you could go back or if there was somebody in your position when like you were just starting, right. You, you were, you were just starting out. There's somebody else in that same spot trying to do what you've done, trying to create a really unique, special painting company. Like what's that one piece of advice you would give them to help them get to the next level? It's not instant gratification. Yeah, you'll hear it's it's pretty common nowadays. Like, I don't know if I'm going to answer your question there, Eric, but uh, we'll we'll see the best I can. It's, okay. uh, it's, it's, um, it's really common to see someone their first year, second year, third year be in a multi million dollar gross sales arena. It's really common nowadays. Um, but what they're not telling you is what the fuck's in their bank account. Um, gross sales, like we said, it's just a vanity matrix. Don't get you hear these guys on YouTube or wherever else, hey, we grossed $3 million. I, I remember it was multi, 
20 years ago, we had me and my wife, uh, we were running 38 guys and we booked like, we were well over 3 million, close to $4 million gross sales. But that same Christmas, we could barely afford groceries in our house. Um, so yeah. that was a game changer for us. We actually went bankrupt on that company. Um, wow. and, and those battle wounds and those battle scars that I, from back then are, I'm telling you right now, forget the vanity matrix, focus on what moves the needle, your skills. No one can take their skills away. The government can't take your skills away. A bankruptcy yes. can't take your skills away. And a divorce can't take your skills away. Um, your skills are, are learned through, through, I think I just done a video on this swinging through the jungle. I'm not sure if you caught that. Your skills are learned through get, getting dirt kicked in your fucking face. Um, the more dirt you get kicked in your face, the bigger your freaking fruit tree is going to grow. The bigger your oak tree is going to grow. Those trees don't grow without dirt and shit on them. Yep. So take the dirt and shit, say thank you, ask for more and move on to the next transaction. Not every transaction is going to be a, a perfect laydown. Not every transaction is going to be a grand slam. It takes a whole bunch of base hits. You'll get a couple of doubles, you'll get some triples, and then you'll get some grand slams. Um, and it's just part of business. It really is. And, and eventually, if you're in this business long enough, you're going to get, um, yeah, you're going to get some battle wounds and be proud of them and, and share them with people. Don't be ashamed of them. Share them. Yes. Um, and be careful with your money. Let me see. We are going into a recession. We're already in recession. Um, and this might get pretty, pretty ruthless and your tools are going to take care of you. Uh, your mindset will take care of you. Um, yeah, yeah. You can always call, reach out to me. I, I talked to hundreds. I've talked to hundreds of painters from Australia to Canada, here to the United States. Australia. Yeah, I don't know. Whether, I know a lot of yeah. painters, but I don't know many in Australia. <laughs> yeah. We message each other. And you know what? Being a business owner is one of the loneliest freaking jobs on the planet. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, you're, you're stuck in your mind. No one knows exactly what's in your head. Eric, you're probably, I know you're a business owner um, and you got a bunch of people you can lean on for information, but it's very few people in your life that you can lean on that really understand the, the troubles and tribulations you go through as a business owner and the stresses and worries, make sure you got payroll coming in, make sure you're trying to, you're trying to target profit for next month, make sure your clients are paying time and it's not paying on time. Can you work something out with them? Um, mm -hmm. Being a business owner, it's a lonely job. You're kind of crazy for going into this, trying to be a business owner. Um, but God damn, the money's freaking good. It is good. Um, let me see some other tidbits. Uh, if your do or die is not on your side, cut them loose. Cut them loose. Um, your do or die being your mm. wife, your girlfriend, your wife or girlfriend. And this is I'm talking to a guy. Don't get all sexist on me. Even don't. don't, don't <laughs> this works well for women. If your do or die doesn't got your back, then cut sling load. Your business is with you forever. Your do or die, you can replace them. If your girlfriend just a girlfriend until the next girlfriend comes along. The wife you have right now, if they're not 100% supportive, um, and it depends how long you've been married, there, oh, there's all kinds of issues on there. Um, <laughs> but if you're getting taken advantage of in a relationship, make sure you uh, cut sling load on that pop smoke. Um, your business is with you forever. Your business skill set will be with you forever. And you can always upgrade your girlfriend or your wife. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm um, I'm actually like here now. I'm currently in Nashville uh, visiting one of, one of the coaches I work with. Um, and he said the same thing to me yesterday when I was with him. And I, I just noticed it with a lot of very, very high level entrepreneurs is that they all say the same thing about their significant other. Not once have they made me feel bad or guilty about working. They've supported me the whole time. They're never like, you're not home. You're do working too much. They're always like, yeah, go do your thing. Build it. Like every yep. single high level entrepreneur I know that that is in a relationship of some kind. It's always, that's always the story and not the other side of it. So you know, I always say people don't typically have work problems. They, or business problems, they have personal problems that bleed into it. I think that's, I mean, it's kind of the harsh love, but I mean, you like, you're spot on. I think that's so key. And a, a lot of people have that stuff outside of work relationships, et cetera, that isn't supporting them. That's affecting that, you know? Yeah, I love for sure. It. For sure. The, the couple things I got out of that, just, just, just to recap, the couple things I got out of that whole spot was like, if, if we were to boil it down, kind of one piece of advice, be patient, right? Be, be patient, understand like business takes time, focus on acquiring skill sets and get gritty when dirt gets kicked in your face. This is going to happen. Oh, I love that. Get you gritty and push through so it. Much more lighter than I do. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just took what you said and condensed it. Fucking grunt right here, but I got a fucking <laughs> better view than you in fucking Nashville. 
<laughs> I know you do. I need to come out visit you soon. It's beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. That's Catalina. Can you see Catalina? Not quite. Not quite, right. but I, tr I trust you. All right. Beautiful. That cliff over there, I live right on the other side of that cliff. Insane. Yeah. But amazing. Ron, I love having you on, man. Um, is there anything else you want to share before we cut it off? Uh, no, the rest might be X-rated Pornhub. Talk to you later, brother. <laughs> amazing, dude. That was awesome. I appreciate it, dude. Bye.